So I had a really long day today. And um, I was just working a double at my shop. And something about today specifically led me to feel like I was in the same, I was like I had traveled back in time two years because two years ago I was working really, really hard, like doubles and stuff all the time. Maybe not eating enough during the day, kind of just over being overworked and really having to work crazy, crazy hard just to get by. Um, and I probably kind of got hooked on that feeling a little bit because I think I was, you know, you know, working hard can be fun, even if it's like kind of miserable. So I felt like I was back in that time period and, uh, I went to one of my favorite mental health apps, which is called Youper. It's really great. You should look into it if you are into that kind of thing. It's like a cognitive behavioral behavioral therapy bot. Um, but it's very, very effective. And even that for the small fee that you have to use to use it now, um, it's very effective. And it was free back two years ago, so that's another reason I got started using it. So I went to my sort of like a mental health app to kind of do some um, journaling and looking through some stuff tonight because I was feeling pretty down and I've been going through a season of feeling pretty down right uh, recently uh, some mental upset so so when I went today to to journal on this mental health app I I scrolled back for some reason to, you know, two years ago when I did my first couple of chats with this mental health bot. And I, I, I was kind of, it was a really, really good perspective because essentially, even though I'm having a lot of mental health problems now, and I had this chat with this bot about feeling insecure and feeling um, d uh, lonely and like um, distant and just these kind of different anxieties that are coming up for me recently. Um, I looked back in time at the kind of conversations I was having with this bot two years ago, and I just remembered that space of being like incredibly depressed. And not even, depressed isn't even the word I would use, I don't think as much as like also like lost. I think as I was reading over it, I realized that two years ago, I was very lost. Um, it, it felt like I was, uh, I was look, reading notes from a, a different person, not me. And that made me realize that even though I'm de dealing with some rough stuff nowadays, I have such a different perspective that helps me stay. I'm just essentially feeling incredibly grateful right now because I realize all the things I have now that I didn't have then. One of the things is dreams and goals. I was very depressed back then and I was literally saying things to the, like, what, what's the point? Like, what's the point? And I had a really bad injury and I was like, I'm in pain all the time. Um, I, I'm depressed. I don't understand what the point is. And uh, getting very frustrated, feeling very lonely. And uh, I think one major shift that's happened is <laughs> I have dreams now, which I didn't have back then. And that's kind of amazing, isn't it? Like I thought about, it, I was like, well, well now I don't deal with those problems as much because I, I literally have goals and dreams and, and my dreams are very concrete. I, I have this dream to create a, um, to create a uh, com intentional community living center that's a nonprofit, or to be a part of one of those, which house which provides housing um, for people who are experiencing homelessness and, and people who need a refuge from society where they can do a, a work trade, working on the farm in order to stay in the housing, and also therefore get nature therapy and like community therapy and uh, yeah, having these sort of oasis from the world that can serve as a a nonprofit and a uh, 
a mental health center uh, retreat for people that are experiencing homelessness, either permanently or semi-permanently. And um, I'm in school for psychology in order to, to make that um, dream a reality. And, when, and also spiritual um, therapy for those people. Um, so I have this concrete dream and then I, and, and what light, I have something that lights me up from the inside that has nothing to do with the friends and the partners that I was stressing about connecting with back then. Like back then I was very focused on connecting with my friends and partners. And it's not that I don't care about that now, but um, that's not where my light comes from. Like I, I get lit up by this idea of the things that I discovered that make me happy which are like community therapy, spirituality I've discovered in the last few years, um, which is just beautiful. And then um, dance, uh, movement therapy and flow and um, mindfulness and, um, and um, confidence. And, and within spirituality, <laughs> uh, spiritual healing, for my body, and um, which which has gotten a lot better since then, and um, and also this this amazing, overwhelmingly beautiful concept of um, to, I, I I describe it as the goddess, right? But this 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 concept and this 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 um, ability to tap into your own inner being and your own inner knowing to find out what's true. Um, and the ability to rely on that and to have confidence in that and to have rootedness in that above all else. Um, and a sense of moral compass, like a tuning into a morality that is both within me and an access point to something higher than myself um, that I can trust and used to guide myself morally throughout my life um, which is an anchor you know for me it's an anchor to the goddess and the god and that's something that gives me great comfort because now I am I don't have to worry if I'm sad or confused or a mess because I am connected to something much bigger than myself and they're who I serve um, so I found spiritual healing there and then now I have this part of my dream of bringing spiritual spiritual um therapy healing therapy to others um and rewilding which is this concept of getting back into the nature right and and, I, and I'm by no means have i reached any of those goals and i'm still in the stress of it and in the in the mud, muck of it right um and i'm still dealing with the exact same struggles like i was i was reading back then and i was i always kind of romanticized that part of my life uh, recently when I was thinking oh I was things were so simple I was in a long term relationship and I I think I looked really good like I think I was really like kind of skinny and like lean and I, I just had this sort of romanticization about that period of my life but then I looked and I saw that my number one thing I was I was journaling about back then was one was depression and the other one was um, binge eating which has been like my main uh, vice, right, for my whole life, and I and I know that it's been an issue recently, but I I guess I just didn't realize that I was I've been that I was struggling with it all the way back then, you know, two years ago, at a time in my life when I rom that I romanticized. Um, but even then, um, I was struggling with it, and so. Just to see that I've come so far, not that I've lost any of those same struggles, you know what I mean? But that I've gained something huge that I didn't even know existed, which is this sort of like underlying reason for existing and passion and beauty um, and understanding that beauty and, and, and bliss exists that I didn't have before. Um, for instance, I've experienced swimming in a wild, freezing lake and sun tanning with good friends. Um, and that afternoon is one of the highlights of my life. Um, yeah, and I was like half naked, like, like sur body surfing on the rapids <laughs> with a uh, group of friends, my, my witch friends, and, um, and, uh, yeah, 
like being connected to the goddess, like jogging in the sunlight and dancing in the leaves and um, going to a sort of friend, almost stranger's house for a solstice celebration and being in, in, in tune with the spirit and, and feeling that welcomed there and um, dancing with this uh, stranger at a, an ecstatic dance where I was completely channeling my inner child and they were too and we just were giggling and sh running around and holding hands and playing with our feet together <laughs> like this amazing experience and then another experience that I've had where I was completely dropped into my divine feminine and half naked again in the park and channeling and in touch with the goddess and I met a beautiful fairy or angel or whatever you want to call them who came up to me and saw that and was communicating with me there in that moment we were both real and um, not masked and those few moments are probably like the most blissful experiences of my life um, came out of nowhere right unexpected I, I wasn't chasing them or anything with it but they've given me it in several uh, cold plunges into Barton Creek but but they've given me this um, uh, knowledge that there is bliss out there you know um, and I think those came after some those I guess coming to think of it those all came after some or were connected um, to the like, spiritual work that I had done and I was working on, on dropping in to my inner child and to my divine feminine and to um, a, a community of, of like-minded spiritual people um, and uh, so that is something that's completely different like mind-blowing back then I had I, my, my, my reality was very gray and I would say now I, I experience depression, but maybe and maybe more in like a dark blue. And also there is this constant rainbow that is not me, but I have like access to it, if that makes any sense. I, I can, I know that it exists. I don't always remember that it exists, but most of the time I am still aware that it exists and it's, um, incredible and, and it was kind of crazy too is it's something I couldn't even possibly begin to understand two years ago I was an atheist I had no spirituality I had no pathway to spirituality or, or thought that I would ever explore that and then I had no understanding that joy existed I knew about pleasure you know and I knew about love um, I didn't really understand bliss or um, joy you know what I mean I didn't really understand those I didn't really know that they existed um, and I didn't know about authenticity and dropping into your divine and channeling and like uh, what's another way to say it like rootedness within yourself and certainty I didn't know about like authenticity and certainty um, within yourself and not looking for outside sources for that so so these things are like incredible thinking that I'm I had this vision and a dream and a purpose and um, and other material things like I have a nice car um, I'm going to school um, I you know I'm renting an apartment I've been like single for a while and, um, and some some concrete mental health like progress too where it's like I don't I don't have a, I don't panic as much you know um, I have way longer stretches of time without having anxiety. I used to have, I remember when I went back in my journal and, you know, and looking at it, that I used to have so much uh, panic associated with certain memories and people and places that I had to avoid a lot of um, places, people, and thoughts even like colors or shapes um, that would remind me of the traumatic times in my life because if I encountered those um, reminders or triggers or whatever you want to call them I would go into full panic mode and I didn't I was very unforgiving of myself because I thought this was forever and I didn't really understand it so I 
I would go into full panic mode, meaning I, I, I felt like the world was ending. I felt like I was dying. I, I would lash out at people and, 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 and I, um, become very needy and, uh, explosive and, uh, reckless and desperate, um, and just kind of like a mess from these kinds of triggers. So I would therefore um, avoid them very aggressively. And that was difficult, you know, to navigate. And it, and it was just uncomfortable because I, I did end up encountering them a lot. And so I would just kind of live with this constant anxiety and these panics that would waves um, that would come from these moments. Um, but, and I didn't really know that it was possible to escape that, you know? Um, so I was kind of always running from it. But, but I kind of came to the realization now, like two years later, that the stretches between being triggered by that kind of thing are a lot bigger. Um, and that didn't just happen, right? Um, it, it wasn't something that I was actively trying to fix, but I was doing things that I knew that I should be doing for my mental health, like going to therapy and having difficult conversations that intentionally trigger those feelings um, in order to sit with them in a safe space with a safe person. Um, that was the biggest one. And then also, um, also, um, I think another thing is like the forced socialization of um, the service industry and school where I have to be, you know, interacting with people whether or not I'm feeling um, particularly triggered. I have to interact with people a lot and that forces me to realize that my emotions and, and that I find so messy and, and, uh, and acceptable um, they, they come out and people don't usually think they're that strange. Um, people usually are fine with them. Um, and, you, and then eventually, I think by, by just the exposure and realizing that people are fine with them, you can start to, ex, um, become less alarmed by them yourself. So that's another thing that's really, really cool. So I, I just... It's overwhelming to look back and see how these things have literally transformed my mind and my body. Um, I guess it's gratitude, right? But it's almost more just like awe and uh, I, I, maybe the maybe the word is gratitude. I don't really know how to describe like realizing there's this huge thing in your life and you didn't even realize you had a hole in your heart and then now you realize there's something in it you know that's filling up that hole you just haven't noticed the whole hole for a while it's like if there's a big hole in the ground and you've been jumping over it and climbing around it for years and then you know slowly you put little little through through a stick down there every day and where it's like this is not going to get anywhere but just just kind of hope it does and added a little cement here and whatever you had with you and then one day you're walking across the, the 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 hole and it's a little bit easier you can hop down and hop out and then before you know it, it you're just walking over the hole that you've filled in over the years with sticks and stones and and then one day you've walked across it so many times you you forget about it ever being a hole and you you kind of grieve that loss of like that forgetfulness you kind of grieve like oh geez that, that that person who is filling up this hole every day with a stick and a stone and suffering through having to climb it like that person you're kind of grieving the forgetfulness of them because they deserve gratitude but at the same time it feels so good to just walk across that hole without any like concern and you feel almost guilty because you know there's other people who are still climbing on the edge of their hole um, or 
falling in and breaking more bones and having to climb back out and scale the wall and their fingernails clutching into the wall. And, but you have a filled in a hole and it doesn't mean that you're not still sad or you don't still have a broken leg or like, but you fucking, the hole is not there anymore. And that's, I guess the word is gratitude. Only one I can think to describe it. I, I guess I just want to witness this, right? Um, and I do kind of love looking forward rather than looking back. And I, I, I there are a lot of lights and um, kind of like exciting options in the horizon that I can explore, um, including because I know how I thrive best and because I've experienced these bliss moments. I, and also just like good flow of life. I feel like I have an easier, mm, a clearer perspective about what makes me feel happy and healthy. And it's not that I'm there, but maybe I can more easily make a road map than I used to because I didn't even know what I wanted. Um, so <laughs> if nothing else, I kind of wanted to make this because I other people who who were struggling with um you know e either maybe like uh, mental health issues maybe like ptsd or maybe like um just anxieties and depressions and things um going into a new environment that you're not sure that we'll ever get rid of it or I, I, maybe this could be a encouragement for you you know or or for those of you also who have come to this place of, of working really, really, really hard and, and getting somewhere that you never even thought possible um, to encourage you to take a moment to look back because it's great to look forward and isn't it wonderful that like we've kind of evolved to always look to the next thing and, and the exciting opportunities ahead. But I think it right now, it specifically for some reason, warrants us taking a moment to look back like don't think about all the things that you don't have don't think about all the things that you want and you're not sure if you're gonna get please take a moment and just like give God some glory and be in awe of the places you've come you know what I mean be in awe of the places you've come. It's really cool. And there's a lot of really cool stuff coming. Like don't just look with negative glasses and see the high points and, and think about how you're not where you wanna be. Like, no. God damn, look at what you've done. It's amazing. And not even just you, but look at what's happened in your life and your mind. And that was that was not just you, it was the the culmination of so many people that gave you a leg up, so many people that whose one little sentence um, shifted your perspective and the and the amazing coming together of an entire world of people that have been that have worked really hard you don't even know how hard to come together at just the right time to give you this gift. And of course, they're all a part of you and you're a part of them and the collective, you know, God, like we did this. And I just wanna give us a round of applause and Hold some space for that, um, that awareness. I love you. And I love us. And I'm also excited for the future. I can't really hold off on that. I'm also excited for the future. I'm excited for where we'll go. I'm excited for where we'll go. Um, but I'm not going to focus on what we don't have. Instead, I'm going to focus on what I'm excited for and what we have, goddamn, what we have achieved. <sighs> love, 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 love
Thank you, God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Beautiful beauty. Beauty. Cool. All right. Bye.